Well, this evening we have a, a great opportunity to hear from a man who God has uh, worked in his life in miraculous ways. And uh, his testimony, I, I got to hear it for the first time last night, is, is quite breathtaking. And uh, of course, he would give all the glory to Jesus because that's where it's due. Um, but I'm excited to uh, introduce to you Brett. Why don't you come on up, Brett? Everybody give him a hand as he comes up today. Maybe. And Brett's going to share his testimony. We're going to do it a little differently. We're going to have a seat. We're going to kind of do a little interview um, slash testimony. And um, we're going to, of course, hear what God has done in your life to bring you to this point uh, this evening. So let's have a seat. Let's, let's go ahead and begin with Brett. Tell us a little bit. Tell us about who you are first and, and, um, and start where you feel uh, the Lord is leading you to start. Um, okay. Well, uh, my name is Brett Lark, and I've been coming here for about a year and a half. Um, but uh, my story really begins when I was six years old, and doctors were doing some tests on some moles on my skin, and they sat me down with my mom, mm. and they told me that I had cancer. Mm. I had skin cancer. And not only that, they also said that I was diagnosed with a condition that was genetic and that I would just have a propensity for cancer and I would have more and more cancer until eventually it killed me before I was 30, they, they guessed. Um, I'm now 33, so. Um, but, uh, yeah. So tell me how, how amen. <laughs> all, all glory to God and I'll talk about that more, but. So take me back to that day um, hearing that as a six-year-old boy, uh, how did that impact you, that, that young, hearing that type of news? Um, I mean, for the whole family, it was very difficult. Um, but I didn't grow up in a family that went to church. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really have any way to process that information either, nor did my family. We just were very hopeless at that time. Um, and it ended up slowly developing into an anger inside of me and, and resentment for, you know, if there was a God in my mind, um, I didn't like him. And I didn't like him because I felt like I was being picked on. Like, like why, why you know, I have all these friends that are very healthy and I'm six years old and I'm dealing with this. Um, so it was very difficult and it was, obviously more difficult coming from a family that we didn't have that security of knowing uh, the love of Christ to hang on to and have a hope for. Wow. So tell us, what did that look like for you once that diagnosis was given, once you started to develop more of these, these tumors, um, what did it look like for you, like going to the doctor? How often were you at the doctor's office? How many surgeries? So. Uh, the doctor's predictions were accurate in the, in the sense that they were saying that it would be more and more bouts of cancer and that was the way that it occurred. So I would go in and get tested and every summer, every winter, it seemed like I was getting surgery and they would remove cancer. And it was a, it's a big surgery. When, when you think of a mole on your skin, you think, well, oh, that's not that bad because they just do a little scoop. No, if anyone knows and had anything removed that might be cancerous, um, they will tell you that it's not just a little nick. It's, they got to go all the way underneath it, and it's, it's quite a lot. There was one surgery in particular that was the worst. It was 14 years old, um, and there was uh, a total of 12 cancer sites that needed to be removed on my body, uh, including my head, neck, back, all kinds of places. And um, I went into the surgery weighing 10 pounds more than after I came out of the surgery. Wow. So that was basically 10 pounds of flesh that they took off my body. Um, and, uh, and sleeping after that was just really, that was a rough, that was a rough surgery. But I, I ended up liking school more than I liked vacations because <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't have any surgery going on during school times. Um, but that was how we lived, and, we, and, and, and that was what our fa my family was accustomed to. I'm the only child. They, they don't have another kid. So um, we just, that was routine. I would go in, get a surgery, it'd be gone, and then we'd wait for the next one. <laughs> wow. Wow. So. 
That must yeah. be difficult. So um, share with us how, um, how you came to, to know Christ in, in, mm-hmm. during this, this season of your life. Yeah. So I was very bitter and I was very introverted and angry um, uh, young man. Mm-hmm. And uh, I didn't want to do anything except just stay in my room and play my video games, really, if it, if, if it, if it, meant, um, <laughs> if it meant doing extracurricular activities. Um, so I was, I was just very angry and bitter. I had friends, but um, you know, it was a small group and, and we would hang out. But then like, I, I wasn't able to do certain things that they were able to do. So it still left a, a distance between us. Um, and in high school, I was in PE and I wasn't participating um, as the norm. And this man, his name is Gary Young, and he's very important uh, because he, he came to my high school and he talked about uh, a summer rigorous sports training camp, which was definitely not in my wheelhouse. <laughs> I would, it was, it was an easy no for me at the time. But there was something about this man that I was just drawn to more than anyone that I'd ever been drawn to in my life. And I, I don't know like what it was other than now I know it was the Holy Spirit talking to me and God pulling on my heartstrings. But I knew that I needed to take this summer course. And so I talked to him and then he even um, uh, spoke to me more and convinced me to do personal training with them. So I was with this man being mentored by this man every day of the week for an entire summer. And during that course, I, I was just so amazed at, at how unconditionally loving this man was and how disciplined he was. And, and just, he was the most real person I'd ever met in my entire life. And I was like trying to figure out why. And it didn't take long, it took about two weeks for me to really spend a lot of time with them because he would pray with me all the time that I realized what it was and it was because he had Christ in his life and he had a loving relationship with our father. And I didn't know what that meant, but I knew it's, that was the reason that made this individual so different from every person that I'd ever met. And I wanted that. So I started following, following him to church. Um, I would go to uh, Bible studies with him. And I just started, you know, learning from him and being mentored by him. So this is the power of discipleship, by the way. You know, you guys don't know that when you speak to someone's life, what that impact will have because this man led, uh, showed me what, who Christ was. And, um, and pretty soon I was just going to church and I just knew that I wanted to have that relationship. Amen. And it wasn't long after that that I asked God to be the Lord of my life. Amen. And, um, and was baptized shortly after that. Awesome, so. awesome. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Awesome. So tell me, um, now that you had that relationship with the Lord, um, did your health issues subside at all? Or did anything change on that front? So... Um, the church that I was now going to is very um, new aged and, and uh, I wouldn't say Pentecostal, but they believed in, you know, speaking in tongues and, and they believe in hands, healing hands, um, which I do too. It's in the Bible. Um, but they would have pastors come in who had that gift and would have times of healing and, and they would lay hands and, and heal uh, people that were afflicted with ailments. And um, of course, I, I was excited to, oh, Lord, I would love to be healed of my cancer and not have to worry about this anymore. Um, and so I would go and, and go for healing and, um, you know, always expecting to, to hear a good result at my next appointment, but it, it, it was not the case. Um, also, it was very frustrating. It became frustrating in church and I had to really, God was working on me because um, I would see these other people be healed, you know, of cardiovascular disease or, or back pain or neck issues or, you know, accidents, atrocious accidents, car accidents they went through and they would, they would have their healing. And, and then some of these people I would get really irritated at because they would be going up for diabetes issues, 
and then they get laid hands on, and then they were able to eat things that they weren't able to eat before and do things they weren't able to do before, but then I see them with donuts the next day, <laughs> and I'm like, my gosh, you know, like, what would I do if I could, if I could have healing and I wouldn't be throwing it away like this man is, and I'm just, I was just so irritated and angry, and and, and then I would see him go up, you know, six months later for healings, and I would just be so mad, wow. you know. So, um, no, I did not see it that, that way, right. no. Right. So, tell us, um, you know, after going, you know, up for healing and, and, and of course, not being uh, manifested yet in your life, did that impact your relationship with God? Uh, what did the next years following that look like? for you with your relationship with God? Um, my relationship with God stood, stood there because mm-hmm. it was the only thing that, that gave me hope. Okay. And, and I knew, I knew, I knew in my heart that, that it was real and it was true. And regardless of my healing, I knew that um, my father is my father. Yeah. And, um, and it gave me so much peace. And, and so I continued along those roads. Um, and I went to college and I, I pursued uh, studies in exercise science. I think it's because I, I was trying to figure out maybe if I could figure out what's going on. <laughs> um, and while I was in college, uh, there was a, there was a growth that was forming on my neck, mm-hmm. and it was getting you know at first it was just kind of like a small growth and and it got bigger and bigger and pr- pretty soon I would just I was getting embarrassed where I always wore hoodies I didn't want to be out seen without a hoodie and um, finally got to a place where I was like okay I really need to go in so I went in and I was diagnosed with stage four lymphoma non-Hodgkin's mm. spreading to my brain and um, mm. and it was it was a rough diagnosis I think about it now I'm, I'm happy but like if I go back to that place, it was, it was a very difficult time. Um, they said that they were gonna need to do surgery. And I said, well, okay, well, I've done that before. And they said, well, this time you may not make it. Mm. And even if you do, you have a very low chance that you would ever be able to use your right arm ever again. Um, and, and so all the doctor's predictions had been coming true to this point. And here's the one before 30 mm-hmm. at 21 years old that is going to do me in, you know. And um, so as soon as I got that diagnosis, I went back to my dorm room and I hit my knees harder than I ever hit my knees before. Um, and... I don't know if anyone has seen or heard the story of um, the little boy in Kansas, I think, and, and he um, had a near-death experience, and then he saw heaven, mm-hmm. and they wrote a book about it, and they wrote a movie about it, um, is, um, and, uh, and, and I read that book years later, and I, and I watched that movie years later, and in the book and in the movie, the father, when his, when his son passes away, gets very angry at God. And he goes into a waiting room and he, and he's saying some, some harsh things. Mm. He's, he's upset. Um, when I hit my knees that night, uh, you know, people, people read that in the book and think, well, could he, is that okay? Are you allowed to talk to God mm. like that and be upset that, you know, he's taking your son? Like, are you allowed to talk to him that way? I talked to God that way mm. that night. And I'm not saying that you should, but like, mm. I, there was no curse words, but I was saying things like, Lord, you know, if you want me dead and, and, and brought up with you, do it now. Mm. Don't, don't wait. I mean, if that's just what you want for, for my life, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's be done with it. If not, you're going to have to do something yeah. because it's, now's the time. And after what seemed like a short amount of time of praying, and, and speaking to God this way, um, I just, I felt this huge overwhelming sense of peace and, a, and more than I've ever felt in my entire life. And I just knew that everything was gonna be okay. And I didn't know how, mm. and I didn't know why or what or what was gonna happen the next day, but I just knew that it's gonna be okay. And um, I crawled in bed and had a wonderful sleep 
The next day, I went to my professors, and I, and I, I didn't tell them the exact extent of the situation, but I told them that, you know, I'm be taking a break. Mm. And God started talking to me, and he started saying, I'm going to um, bring your healing in a different way than you're expecting. Mm. I'm going to show you that there's things in your life that you've been doing, whether you realize it or not, that have, that have caused this situation. Wow. And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna help you, and I'm gonna teach you how to get rid of it. Wow. wow. And so the internet was not what it was back then mm -hmm. when I was going to college like it is now, and you can find so much information now. It wasn't to that extent at that point. So I was, God had me, you know, looking through medical journals and all these other different kind of articles in my college campus and showing me different materials of things that he'd been working on with other people too on natural remedies for mm. cancer. Wow. And during that process, I was implementing those and basically experimenting on my body. Mm. Um, but it wasn't experimenting to me because I knew that like God was having me do this and I didn't question it. I just knew, I knew that this was what I needed to have that need to be done. And then the day, which was about three months later, from my diagnosis, the day of the pre-operation appointment mm. occurred, yeah. came. And I was very, I was very disappointed. I, I knew everything was gonna be okay, but I was also very disappointed that day because the growth was still there. Mm. The tumor was still there on my neck. And so I believed everything that I went through that those three months were, was real mm. and God was talking to me. Yeah but I also couldn't argue that it was still there. And so I was very downtrodden as I went to that pre-operation appointment and I went into the waiting room and the doctors were coming in and checking on things and they were starting to bustle around and, and, and start measuring things and, 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 and looking at their notes more and, and, and talking and conversing. And so finally I pulled one of them aside, my main oncologist, and I said, what's going on? And he said, the cancer has, the tumor has shrunk <laughs> and that never happens with stage four cancer. Wow. So, and so I, um, I said, what does that mean? And he said, well, well we don't want to uh, go jump into surgery because it's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Let's wait two weeks, have you come back two weeks and reassess and see what it's like. Right. So two <laughs> weeks later, I, I went to another appointment and it shrunk more and more and I went into several of these two week appointments and then finally I just stopped going because I like, I know where this is going. <laughs> I know exactly what's gonna happen yeah, now. And um, I, I certainly du doubled down on everything that God was teaching me and showing me. And before, uh, you know, n n not many people knew what was going on at this point. Right. My mother knew, mm -hmm. but my, my fiance at the time didn't even know mm -hmm. the extent. She knew that I was going in for appointments, but she didn't know what was going on. And before our wedding day, um, my cancer was completely gone. Wow, praise God. <laughs> praise God. Okay, so you, you have to share what it was that God revealed to you, you know, through those, uh, you know, through studying the human body, through his spirit leading you. Uh, what was, if you can kind of highlight the main uh, changes that you made, what, what was it that you, you were led to do? Um, cancer has obviously become, uh, I call it an epidemic, and it really is, um, in spe specifically in the United States. If you look at the, the amount of diagnosis that we've received in the course of our history, we're up to a point where I think it's at a, one in every two people will be diagnosed with cancer before they pass away. Wow. That's ridiculous. It's half the population is gonna be diagnosed wow. with cancer. You, know, you look to your left and you look to your right mm -hmm. and two of you are gonna be diagnosed. Mm -hmm. um, so, but that wasn't always the case. And um, there's really three components that he showed me. And there's a lot that goes into it, but I'm, I'm gonna get to the basic gist of it. And uh, I mean, we, I could talk hours and hours, and, and, and I do often with people that God brings to me and, and, and 
has me work with them. Um, but uh, the three things that he really showed me was that nutrition was a huge component and that we are actually being told that there's a lot of things that are safe for us to put in our body that aren't wow. and that are man-made, hmm. um, that, that aren't God-made. Wow. And it wasn't designed that way. Um, on, on that component, if you can think of it this way, the reason why everyone eats here, the reason why we all eat food is because your cells are dying off and then regenerating on a daily basis. Your skin's dying off faster than your bone cells are dying off and regenerating, but your cells are still dying off and regenerating. That's why you need food. That's the whole reason, to create those building blocks again for it to keep re that process going. It's a, it's a process that we'll never fully understand. I was talking to you before. Um, we know a lot about the universe, but how much do we really know about the universe? The body is the same way. Like we know a, a lot about the body, but really we know very little. Wow. Um, and through this process of cells dying off and regenerating, when you are eating something, what you eat is becoming that cell. And cancer, all cancer is, and you can look it up, I'm not making this up, cancer is a mutation of a cell. So it's, it's the DNA, and I don't wanna to get too technical, it's the DNA of a cell mm. that has had just something wrong with it, and it turns on a switch to replicate itself faster than it's supposed to, mm. developing a tumor, right? right? And then that displaces tissues, and then that causes damage to your inner body, mm -hmm. and then that's what ultimately kills you. Um, so you can imagine that if you're taking in, if you're eating things that are becoming your cells, and you're eating things that really we're not supposed to, and we're not supposed to be making cells out of, uh -huh. it's easy for there to be a mutation going on. Oh, yeah. Okay. So nutrition was a huge component, and he told, and he showed me that there was lots of different things that we need, I needed to, to cover there and that I was consuming and, and causing this situation. And to be honest, um, my mom has a really tough time hearing of this because, you know, she fed me a lot of things. <laughs> but she didn't know, right? We, we, we were told that things were safe and, mm. and that's just the way it was. Um, but that was a huge component. The next component was stress, stress management. Um, you can eat very, very well and still develop cancer because stress hormones, if you're having them going on all the time and we're stressing out over little things constantly, mm. um, it can actually damage DNA a lot too. And then additionally, it's circulation. Um, again, I don't want to go into too much detail, but there's a famous study of Lance Armstrong. Lance Armstrong was a uh, very professional athlete and he had a team of people making sure that he was eating the right things and organic and all that kind of stuff. And he was getting plenty of exercise and he was very, you know, fit. So why did he develop cancer? Well, he developed cancer in his testicular area. And actually, um, there's been a lot of studies and we know why. Um, when you go to a, a bicycle store from in the men's section, you'll see that they sell seats with a cutaway in the seat. That's because of the research that we did from uh, his having cancer, and we realized that it was because he was sitting on that seat for so long and cutting off circulation to yeah. his testicular area. Mm. And um, the reason why that occurs is because cancer can develop when the immune system is inhibited, right? Every day, we can't stop all the toxins or all the radiation that, that's, and, and that's just not for us. We'd be stressing ourselves out if we were trying to control everything. There has to be a component of faith, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, you walk out of here and there's, there's radiation from the sun, there's all kinds of things that causes mutations in the DNA mm -hmm. of our body all the time. Right. You're, everyone here has mutations in your DNA going on all the time. But your body is also equipped with an immune system that God provided and it fix those DNA mutations as they occur. So really, cancer occurs when two things happen. One, we're bombarding it with chemicals or toxins to where it can't keep up the, the, 
the fixing ratio. Right. Or, or a group of cells gets so screwed up that it, it has difficulty fixing it. Mm. Or two, we've um, damaged our immune system to where it's weak well, and it's not able to fight the mutations that, right. that are occurring. So those are really the two situations that occurs. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah, in a nutshell. So, uh, so tell me, once God revealed these things to you and you, of course, begin to see them play out, you know, in the, the tumor shrinking, uh, did you keep that information to yourself? Did you, did you tell everyone <laughs> you could tell? Or, I mean, what, how did your life change after God showed you this? Um, so I, I did keep it to myself initially. Okay. I, I was just so thankful that I didn't have to deal with this anymore. And, and to be quite frank, I was also just like in a little bit of a disbelief, like, well, it's gone, but like, what, what's, what's next year? You know what I'm yeah. saying? And then every year that went by, it was just like, it's not coming back. It's not, it's not gonna, God. it's not coming back. Like God t take, took care of it. Um, and, uh, and then I had a friend, cause there was like maybe a th a, like three people that knew what really was going on right. at this point in my life. My mother and a few different other people. Mm -hmm. Not even my dad, she, you know, like, <laughs> um, and the word spread after a while from those people mm -hmm. to people that were dealing with cancer or that had loved ones that were dealing with cancer. And then they would contact me and said, I heard that you dealt with this, that, 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 that God figured this out for you. What did you do? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, gee, I, you know, I'll tell you what, what it did, but I don't know if it's going to work for, like it worked for me, but I don't know. Right. Well, they implemented the same things and then they are free of cancer wow. and they don't have cancer anymore. Wow. Lou White um, was a friend of the family. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. it's true. Um, Lou White's a friend of the family and she, I didn't know about her diagnosis. She'd been dealing with cancer for a while mm. in, in her um, uh, feminine area. Yeah. And she contacted me and, and she said, I heard that this is going on, what'd you do? And she, that was one of the people I was like, what? Well, I, I don't know if it's gonna work, but here yeah. you go. And I gave her the information and she just followed it just to the T. Yeah. And, it, and it disappeared. Her, her oncologist was like freaking out because they'd been dealing with it for several years and wow. it was growing and growing. It never reached stage four, but you know, it was Still. stage three. Yeah. Um, and it was gone. Wow. Completely 100% gone. Wow. Um, and so it, I, 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 and then people started encouraging me, you, you got to write a book, you know, you got to, you got to get this information out there. Yeah. And now I'm not the only one saying it. If you go online right now and you start doing some research, just light research online, you're going to find a lot of other people talking about these same things wow. that nutrition plays a big role that, um, I mean, you, it's, it's out there now. Mm -hmm. It's not just me saying it. Wow. Um, and I was nervous to say, cause I'm like, well, I don't, I don't know. Like, it's not mine, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, so what, what was important though, to me though, is that, um, as people started talking more about it, um, I realized that a lot of these people didn't have a major component because there was a lot of people because I, I ran a gym at the time, there was a lot of people that I would come across on that, were, that, had, it, that had a lot of the health situations going the right way, right? And, and what I mean by that is that they were eating the right foods, they were exercising, they were doing the right things, but they were still dead. They were still dealing with a lot of illnesses. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you that these people were also dealing with spiritual wow. issues in their life as well. Wow. And I saw it secondhand from other people first, and then God told us to move out to California mm -hmm. and we did, and we were sent by our church. And I was told by my mentor, go find a church, go get plugged in immediately. Do not waste any time. Right. And for whatever reason, I just didn't. Mm -hmm. And I'd looked at a few places and I'm like, this is not right. This is not right. But I wasn't fervent about it. Like mm -hmm. he told me to be. Mm -hmm. And so we were watching our, our webcast from our church in Colorado and that just wasn't working mm -hmm. and it just wasn't happening. Right. And it, it just wasn't a commitment. Mm -hmm. And slowly I started falling away from God. Mm -hmm. And it, I never saw it coming. Wow. I never thought at one point that like, oh, I'm away from God right now. Mm -hmm. But every day was a progressive mm -hmm. movement. That's right. 
And um, I started becoming very uh, callous towards my wife. And when she was dealing with hardships, I was being frustrated that she was putting more drama in our relationship. And I was treating her that way. And we started drifting further and further apart. And I never saw it coming. But she, um, she wanted out. And then here I was uh, about a year and a half um, after moving to California. And, oh, and then my father passed away mm. during this time, um, which was strange because he, he came to know the Lord before and, and it, was a, it was a one, like, I'm not going to say it was wonderful losing my father, but he went to God. You know? and, um, but he encouraged me to go back to church during that time, and then shortly after, Amanda left. Um, and I will tell you that that was 10 years after not having cancer. So I'd been cancer-free for 10 years at this point when she left. But firsthand, I was the sickest I've ever been without cancer. So I was, I was less sick health-wise, and all kinds of otherwise, mm. when I had cancer, than when I was falling away from the Lord and I had no cancer. Wow. So then I was seeing it firsthand, right? I was seeing that I can have this health thing down pat. But if I'm, if I'm spiritually dead, mm. it doesn't matter. It affects you. It affects your health. Mm. And without God, you're going to encounter death. Mm. You just are. Wow. wow. Incredible testimony. Well, Brett, we could keep going for a while <laughs> here, but we want to give an opportunity uh, for anyone uh, in the audience to ask any questions to Brett um, about, uh, you know, what he did, what God led him to do as far as nutrition and um, to see that defeat of cancer, uh, we want to give an opportunity for uh, just kind of like a question and answer time. So there's a mic here in the middle, and if you're brave, just go ahead and stand up and, and speak into the mic and ask your question, and uh, we, um, Brett will uh, answer that question for you. Anyone have any questions? I do want to let it be known also, I don't want to end it off on a sour note. Mm -hmm. Um, that uh, I, was, I, I realized how dead I was and um, it wasn't long after that that I just started pursuing the Lord hard and realizing Amen. the need. Amen. And uh, friends of ours brought us here. Amen. And um, it's just been, I mean, God's been bringing my relationship with them to new levels that I never thought was possible. Amen. And, um, and now I'm, I'm, I feel healthier than I've ever been awesome. before. Um, and I still don't have cancer. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, a new, a new uh, development on our relationship. I'm not dating anybody and I don't expect to. Um, but Pastor Brian was up here two weeks ago and he, he'd said something that really caught on and really pierced my heart, um, but he was saying, I don't remember exactly what he said, but it basically was putting the impression on me that if you have something that, that God is wanting you to pray for, and you're just hoping for it to happen, and you're like a hopeful prayer, like, oh Lord, yeah, please, that would be great, you know, mm. that's not what prayer yes. is, and it's not standing in the gap, and it's not interceding for, for what he's wanting to do in your life. Mm. And when he said that, when he was talking about that, I really took that to heart. And um, I had been praying for our reconciliation for our marriage and I've been waiting and, and whatnot. Wow. But I, I took what Brian said and I, 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 I felt that that was God speaking to me in this issue and I really pressed in and doubled down and, and really, be, you know, followed God's command for our, our, us to intercede for our relationship. Amen. 
And um, this week, there's been miracles happening. Amanda's heart's been softened. Wow. She's been taking our daughter to things that she wouldn't take her to before. Mm. Um, she, like, I, nothing, nothing's major happened yet, but I can see that work being done, and I have hope for the future. Amen. So. Amen. That's awesome. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But I really appreciate you, uh, you know, taking... Uh, you know, the time to share with us, you know, what God's done in your life, and it's an incredible testimony. And Brett has offered um, to uh, share a resource that he's developed with a lot of information um, that deals with what we discussed tonight. And in the back, there's, there's several sign-up sheets where you can uh, put your name and your email, and he'll get that to you. And um, because I believe this, you know, I believe what we've seen in our, our society is is accurate to what you're saying, how cancer has uh, proliferated in our, our culture. And, um, you know, I know if we all, uh, if I ask tonight, how many of you guys have a loved one who has passed away or currently dealing with cancer right now? Let's, let's do a little test. How many? In this room, wow. just a room this size, just about everybody. Wow. And so um, there's no coincidence about that. And so we as believers we have the distinct honor to know the great physician, <laughs> the one who fashioned us. Right. And so um, I'm, I'm just so, uh, just my mind is blown that, you know, God would be so concerned with everything down to the molecular <laughs> with us. And it just goes to show who he is. And so, Brett, you have anything else you want to say? Uh, no, um... There is a sign-up sheet out there. It's a PDF that I, I've created that has a lot of the basic information, um, and I just want that to be out. Mm -hmm. So it's my gift to anyone that would like that information. Um, I'm, it just says first name. Please don't put your last name because I don't like. I want to be intruding in your business. Um, so first name and then email, and I'll send that out to you. And additionally, if you have any questions for me and you'd like to talk to me like on a more personal one-on-one -on -one basis. I also left a place in there for you to put your, your phone number and that you would like to be contacted and I can call you and, and I'll go down that list and make sure that I'm providing you with anything that I can possibly provide you with. Because it's been placed on my heart lately that um, it's time for, for me to give this message out and let it be known what God did for me Amen. and for several of my family members and friends and I, I believe that he wants it to be known that cancer can be a choice. Yeah, wow. Amen. Awesome. Well, thank you, Brett, for that. Thank you so much. Thank you.